So there's a four of us. Uh, uh, meet, uh, we met at uh, Quick Check uh, gas station on 46 and uh, Route 519, and we're going to Eagle Mere Museum. Uh, the motorcycles, cars, and airplanes. So we're gonna meet uh, for lunch there at about elementary with the rest of the club members and have a lunch together before we check out the museum. That's the plan. We're crossing the uh, Delaware River. Last night was a heavy line of rain pass. And in the morning we, we got up, <laughs> weather cleared and uh, it looks like it's going to be a nice sunny day. It's a uh, perfect weather for today's ride. Uh, scenic views of uh, Delaware River and a beautiful wavy road Pennsylvania is uh, one beautiful state nice roads and a lot of dirt roads and a lot of Nice back roads, motorcyclist paradise. I'm not sure what they plant planting on uh, this uh, fields, but everything start growing at this uh, season I guess uh, just uh, beginning to grow in whatever it is they planted the farmers we pass here in the next uh, two three months and it's gonna be like if it's corn it's gonna be six seven feet high I have another hour and ten minutes we're passing the uh, town of uh, Wilsbury. That house uh, 309 North. Well, we're doing a good timing. But keeping a nice pace. I'm at 100 hundred mi 108. 108. I'm like, wow, I'm flying. Uh, no, it turned out uh, <laughs> I was switching my uh, uh, clock on a uh, my dashboard and uh, inadvertently switch my uh, dashboard to uh, metric <laughs> so that shows kilometers I'm at 110 kilometers and my temperature is uh, 14 degrees Celsius what the hell when I stop I have to switch it over nice bright sunny day and uh, it was chilly. We all stopped for coffee. <laughs> all of us got cold. So we are riding for the last two hours and there were four of us. And now there is a father of us. <laughs> Somebody joined the group. I wonder if that's just a random motorcyclist or is that uh, 
Ben <laughs> that joined us that was supposed to meet us somewhere in wind, uh, wind gap in PA without uh, special specific uh, directions or instructions uh, so we just flew by the town and we haven't seen Ben and now later somebody join us uh, I wonder who it is or is it somebody that going in our direction or just uh, taking a loan <laughs> we'll find out I guess when we stop beautiful day beautiful day I got uh, some layers on me and I'm perfectly comfortable temperatures uh, dropped a little from what it was before like in the 80s and now it's like I guess in the 70s and it look a go kart go kart uh, raceway that look like fun <laughs> hey Ben it's you my man <laughs> how are you <laughs> Back in uh, wind gap, and I must have just pulled out and said, oh, I must have missed them. You, you saw us? You didn't see us, did you? You hadn't gone by yet. Oh. I, I, I got left probably two minutes too soon. <laughs> Very good. I was stopped for gas and, and a piss break, and you guys went by. Oh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it is Ben. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. <coughs> oh my goodness. That's one way to meet. <laughs> now we got another 12 minutes to go. We're almost there. Okay, here we meet the rest of the team. I don't know what team, I don't know anybody here. This is a V-Strom parking, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I seen you and I have the same helmet, man. Oh, yeah. We're like uh, yeah. brother. We're like brothers separated at birth, man. <laughs> there you go. Does yours have the Schubert? Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. This was a donation. I didn't buy this. Uh, this was a donation from Bill from the club. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got this one free. Oh, you got one free also? Yeah! Wow! I didn't know you and I have so much in common. <laughs> Both of us are cheap bastards, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm having trouble turning the, this darn communications off. I think I got to do a factory reset on to it. It's, it doesn't seem right. Oh, yeah? yeah. Well, I, uh, I did a little bit of a research, right? And I found that people complaining about that unit. Yeah. That unit cost like I don't know, three hundred dollars or something, yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Did you, you bought a unit? Huh? Did it, you buy a unit? No, it came in the came, oh, in, came the in the helmet for free, so I can't complain. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, it's funny because I saw you coming up behind you, and I was like, I, I was like, hmm, that's a red bike. There he is. <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> Perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pretty amazing. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, we just got to. Uh, our lunch destination and uh, yeah. museum somewhere around the corner.
No, I don't know. Yeah. But there's, there's uh, people getting high on all of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, are you new here? I don't think I've met you. Well, he's been a summer house for a couple of years. Oh, he's so much Uh, good balance. Hey, Lunch is good. So how's the burger? Burger's great. <laughs> All right. The whole team is here. I saw I saw some salmon. Uh, in the first Where are you sitting, Val? I'm at the table behind. Ah. 20th anniversary. Ah. Yeah. 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 I know. He is I know. He's the Motorcycle Museum curator, oh. and he's going to tell us the agenda for the day. Yep. So uh, we're going to have a real short ride here to get down to uh, the private bike collection that we're going to see first. Uh, last couple years, if you've done this at all, we go around the lake, but they just did tar and chipping and stuff yesterday, so we're going to cut that out. Uh, so, um, BMW yeah. BMW no. rides, of course, you got to cut oh, it out. I, I don't think any of my bikes have stuff on them. But, uh, so my helpers today are going to be uh, David Bauer, Andy Clayton and Owen Clayton, and uh, they'll be helping me out. We're gonna do our best to answer questions for you guys. Uh, so I, I'm kind of the bike expert. Andy and David are the car experts because after the bike shop, we're gonna ride up to the uh, museums up at the airport. We'll do the auto museum. And then uh, at the air museum, we're gonna go through those. Actually, the museum director, uh, Kevin, uh, Karen Heisman is gonna be up there today. She's super knowledgeable too. Uh, we'll go through all the airplane stuff. Uh, and then the plan is anybody who is uh, not in a quick hurry to get out of here, uh, we're gonna do a short bonus ride up to the high knob overlook afterwards and then we can kind of disperse from there. Yeah, that's so. about a 20 minute ride from here. Uh, that, that's kind of north and west of us. Yep. So it's a little further away than going where we're going back to, but it's a nice ride. And, yeah, and it's beautiful it's nice view, view, cool place to hang out for Lots a few minutes and chat. So. Beautiful day to uh, Any yeah. questions? <laughs> Is this yours? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Nice. It's all original. Yeah. Okay. I made some cosmetic changes so you can see the handlebar. Yeah. Yeah. What year is this? 69. Well, this motorcycle is uh, 10 years younger than I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He got, that's his bike. Oh yeah. Yeah. He got it. In 1969. Yeah. 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 Hi Val, this is Marlene Moser. We went on a lovely ride today to um, Eagle Smear. It was a nice day for a ride. We had a nice lunch at the Eagle's Mirror Inn. I don't remember the exact name, but um, we all sat together and it was uh, it was nice. And, and now we're here looking at all these lovely motorcycles. It is a, a private collection, so we are we are blessed with a you know a exclusive look at all these lovely motorcycles and then off to some cars and some airplanes so it's going to be a great day so uh whatever enjoy so, the ride awesome so merlin it's a pleasure meeting you yes. tell, tell tell me what uh, motorcycle club you from and like oh. we meet with you today just we had lunch together yes right? there were several there were four motorcycle clubs here today um one from new jersey uh, what's, your, what's your club? Skylanders. Skylanders. Yes, and then there was one from Harrisburg. What was their name? Country? 
I can't remember their name. Yeah. Uh, I'm from the Delaware Valley BMW Club, and we're from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. We don't live. In, we used to live in Bucks County, but now we live in Schuylkill County. But we still affiliate with that same two uh, two and a half hour ride here. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. It was a pleasure uh, meeting you today. Yes, a pleasure meeting you too. Yes, sir. And then did a Chevy bow tie. They did both. And, and Wilbur's the head of the car outfit. He had it all figured out in graphing paper and everything. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he didn't have 57, 57 Chevys, so we had to buy three. <laughs> uh, like this one was a dirt track car. It's got no glass in it or anything like that. It's just a race car. And they bought a, a couple <coughs> other ones. So uh, now he's got more. Uh, there's a whole warehouse full of Tri-5 cars, like 55, 56, 57. It's yeah. a couple miles away. It's just like they're... And yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And as Super I, I was telling cool. some of them when they were first coming in, what makes this really unique compared to some other museums is every car in here is a running driving car they all have registration insurance cards in them they all have gas in them they're the real thing they're not and like where a, are the keys this one just got back from the laundry <laughs> yeah so <they're>, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing it's a living museum we try not to have a bunch of static stuff that doesn't work them, so how is it Right. 1957 Chevy Suburban Rescue Truck. Uh -huh. 1955 first series of Chevy truck Napco 4x4. That's some collection. Nineteen fifty one Chevy tow truck. I don't know how many of these 100 series, there must have been two of them, two or three that were out in the field when uh, we switched over to newer V8s at my dad's farm equipment dealership. And you let them run? People would there? Yeah, yeah, people would steal gas caps on them, so we tried to get one running to, you know, to take back and forth to school. Had the starter you stepped on on <laughs> yeah, the floor. Yeah. And we'd have to stop every once in a while that brass uh, little filter in the carburetor mm. would plug up with the rust and we'd tap, <laughs> tap it out, put it back. We had a wrench with you so you could just tap the carburetor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what all these shifters are for. I would say that they had the smaller ones to control whether it's an all-wheel drive, just rear-wheel drive. You could probably just run it on front-wheel drive, too. And then that one would have been a high and low range. And I would guess that this was three speeds forward and one reverse on that. But this was a, probably a high and low range. And the, and the little uh, levers for The little levers put the differentials in and out of gear. Uh, gauge either for, one separately, yeah, right? Because if you blew the back axle, you could run off the front axle. Or if you blew the front, you could just run off the back axle. So it shifted which axle you ran off. Oh, okay. I've never seen a vehicle with so many levers. Well, a lot of the Max, there was Mack trucks that would have three transmissions. I don't know how they shifted. Three transmissions? Yes. And you did a combination of this. There was duplexes and triplexes of combinations of transmissions. I, I missed all of that. Yeah. What year was this? Oh, this was in the 50s, in the 60s. Well. Yeah. And you'd hook your arm through the steering wheel so you'd reach one lever that way and one the other way. So you could shift two transmissions at once. And it wasn't like you went through all the gears of one transmission no. and then shifted the other one. 
and then went through. No, it was like yeah. maybe a gear or two in this one, and then you had to ship this one, and it was like this convoluted pattern. Yeah, when the Road Ranger transmissions came out, everybody was a good truck driver then because mm -hmm. that was uh, five speeds or six speeds, and then you clicked it, clicked it, and you started all over again. So when, first. so I guess when Allison came up with automatic transmission, and all of that became all, history. Yeah, now it's automatic. All the garbage trucks and buses and stuff. I think the over road guys are still running gears because they're more efficient for fuel. It's good old international scouts. And Broncos, both and of Broncos. them rotted away terribly. Yeah. Dad had a big old international travel wall. That was like a Chevy Suburban, a big long travel yeah. wall. That yeah. was neat. Almost impossible to find a modern shop with a valve grinder in it anymore. That was a machine you, shop. You know, right? I, I'm maybe wrong, but I think this is a riveting machine okay. for brakes. Oh, rivet the friction material on the on the disc. Jesus, I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Reline, so they reline. Yeah. They yeah, yeah. So they even saved the brake adjusted and relined. Nowadays, we throw it all the metal in the garbage, right? Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, uh, in a shop where it worked, we had the machine like this. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing that. <laughs> That's a, yeah, the brake grinder, and valve this is grinder. a valve, valve grinder. And that's a, a alignment, uh, the timing like machine. Timing light. Timing light. Oscilloscope. And what, this is <laughs> a, it must be like a snap-on or something. No. Oscilloscope. You hook up all the cylinders to this. Yes, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. My first job, 1979, we had this stuff, all this stuff, but it hung on the wall. And you pick up the receiver and you talk into the thing. It was so old. And finally, while I was still there, the Bell Telephone, they came in, they took, and I said, I want that. The guy goes, no. He goes, you're not getting this. He was keeping They knew the value of it then. They knew the value of antique phone. It's so neat. <laughs> so you appreciate he had a 66 like this. I went to his house one day and he was changing the back brakes. So he had it jacked up on a scissor jack and he was with his legs folded underneath the brake drum. He was working on the car and all of a sudden I see the car fall off the scissor jack right on his leg. The brake drum was right on his leg like this. He starts screaming. Holy shit, what am I going to do? I go to try to lift up the car. No way. So I ran into his house. I called his mother. I called his brother. His father was home. They came out, <gasps> lift up the car, dragged him out, took him to the hospital, x-rayed his leg. Just a little dent in the bone. No, no broken. <laughs> Not break. broken. Brake Lucky. drum right on his leg. Uh, V8 engine. Hmm. Uh, the carburetor for this is in the V like we'd expect. Yeah. Now, all these airframes that would have been fine to use the fuselage tanks can't feed it anymore. So the way they feed this engine is it's got two fuel tanks, one in the upper wing, one in the fuselage. Uh, both tanks are full before takeoff, and as you're flying, the small little pump here is pumping fuel all the time from the bottom tank to the top tank, uh, which, then gravity. which gravity feeds the engine. Now, the top tank starts uh, overflowing into a standpipe. And right in front of the pilot, you can see a little brass instrument. That's a rotary vane. So as the standpipe is, is taking the fuel off the top of the tank and running down, you have this little vane in front of you. As long as that's spinning, you know you still have fuel in the bottom tank going to the top. Once the little rotary vane stops, now whatever is left in the top tank is what you have, so you better start looking for a place to land. I have written down in the top tank. I don't know offhand. I guess if you're flying it, you know. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, would, I would look into that first. <laughs> All right, hey, uh, I'm James Owen. Some people call me Jim. I'm a member of the Skylands uh, Sport Touring Motorcycle Club. 
and um, here we are in Eaglesmere. It is a fantastic, amazing place. Look at this incredible airplane. Um, I'm a flyer myself, and uh, you know I, I fly for a living. I, I fly a business jet, and I've also uh, do a lot of uh, motorcycle uh, iron butt rally uh, competition. Uh, I rid, rode my ninth one last year uh, in 2023. Uh, I've won three so far, 2009, 2017. You are the first person to accomplish that. Nobody else has won more than one. So, so I'm, nobody else had won more than two. Uh, now I've won three. So nobody can nobody keep up with you. Nobody else won more than one. Now, then I won two, and now I've won three. And you claim to be a normal person. I am a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I look normal? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so I'm, you know, I found something that I'm good at, I love, and I just uh, followed it till I got as good as I can be. And uh, I, I have to admit, um, the 40 year old, my competitors are in their 40s and they keep me on my toes. So uh, playing against them and their, the camaraderie, they're fantastic, very smart, uh, very accomplished. Uh, riders of the, on their own accord, and you know, they'll be uh, riding those kind of rides as you know we go forward. But you know, it's just something that I love doing. I love the game. I love the the, the hunt, the chase, and competing against uh, my fellow riders in a uh, 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 a venue that's. Yeah, we support each other. So, yeah, any one of us would give the shirt off our back, would sacrifice our ride to help another rider. And it's just a part of who we are as motorcyclists. Awesome. It's an honor to be in the same club with you, my man. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you James. Let, let, me, let me show you. Okay. I'm flying that tomorrow. Corporate wow. joint? Yeah. That's a beautiful Citation nice 10. When are you going to give us a ride on that little toy? Oh, well, I have to talk to the owner. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're not the owner? <laughs> I don't own it, yes. You knew I wanted to talk about that. And he is Russian Ural. So we are today at this uh, beautiful, uh, another beautiful day riding and uh, enjoying the museum, right? Of course. And we all came on our motorcycles, but you and Walter had different plan. <laughs> Tell us about your plan. Well, Walter and I are going uh, about an hour further west to Lock Haven, Pennsylvania to participate in the Dirty Dabbers Dual Sport event. And uh, because it's kind of a far drive from home, we just trail her out. Um, and, you know, rather than uh, slabbing, I don't know, 200 something miles on Route 80, uh, it's uh, get in the car. We don't really care what the weather's doing outside. And then, especially Sunday afternoon when we're tired, it's nice to just uh, put your shorts and flip flops on and you know, drive home comfortably in the car. Right, so we, as we uh, all of us uh, going home tonight, your adventure just begins. Just begins. So, yeah, we're only about a little over an hour away. Um, and actually, one of these guys was talking about there's a the Piper Airplane Museum is in Lock Haven. We've ridden by it a bunch of times, never stopped in. So tomorrow we're going to go do that. And uh, I think Walter's going to see if he can get the guys from Solid Performance to help him adjust his suspension. I think they're going to be at this event doing um, free suspension setups. Oh, that's and, yeah, valuable. So I think the weather's supposed to be good. So hopefully we're going to 
do the 100 miles of bad road, which I think is the, uh, you know, uh, nickname for the event. Awesome. All right. you, hopefully you enjoy and have a great experience. I hope so. I'm sure we will. Well, you guys have a nice trip. Are you going to this overlook? Yes. Well, that was uh, pretty amazing to see all this stuff here, cars and the planes and motorcycles and now we're going to see top of the mountain somewhere, they're going to lead us to a cool spot. And now we're going to check out the overlook. So what's the difference between a knob and a mountain? They kind of look the same. Maybe they are. 